You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for episode due here of your bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the option block, what the cool kids call the old OB. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting Options Insider Radio Network. Welcome to all of you who've joined us in the last few months. I know a lot of you are discovering options for the first time, and of course, to all of you who have joined us in the Secret Club recently, welcome to all of you as well. It's a fun club. I think you'll discover there. Fun bunch, fun content, of course, the pro Q&As. Options Oddity is coming up again tomorrow. I'm getting the messages from you folks that you're here diving into some of those trades we've been discussing on Oddities. Of course, the giveaways, a whole bunch of other cool stuff. we got new wrinkles, new additions, new fun things coming for the Secret Club here in 2022. It is our 15-year anniversary, after all, so we got to go big or go home, right? And I have no intention of going home, so it's time to go big. And, of course... You guys can find out how to go big for yourselves at theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Remember, just me and you talking here. Nobody else. (laughs) Of course, however you listen, secret club, maybe you're on demand after the fact. Maybe you you get it through a smart speaker or YouTube, however you get it these days. Keep hitting us up, those questions, those comments, those insights. Also, play along in our polls. We do love to hear from all of you guys and gals out there. And let's see who we're hearing from today. Let's go out first. To St. Charles, which is known far and wide now. That's what I'm hearing anyway. As the land of wealth. <laughs> Where we are joined. I can't even say it with a straight face. Where we are joined by the uncleest of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program. How go things in the land of wealth, sir? Always great to be here. Uh, just excited for another day of life. What's not to be excited about? Well, you may want to hold your excitement because this market flitting with lack of Uncle Mike territory. Uh, By the way, the the pit crew listeners off there at their trade of or whatever the hell it's called. So no pit boys joining us today. Meanwhile, it is time for us to get rolling with our own trade of It is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for... The Trading Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading. And this today is another one of those days where, you know, you can't really prep for the old OB too far ahead of time. Because if you do, it is a fool's errand because the markets will make a fool of you. And uh, coming into showtime, we were earlier in the session 
today. We were seeing mixed markets. We were seeing a bit of a green on the screen with the Dow and red with everything else. And then it turned decidedly red for everything. Everything was red, including the Dow, until effectively, until we kicked off the show. Maybe, maybe a little, just hearing Uncle Mike's voice turned the Dow ever so slightly positive because now we are back to officially mixed territory, even if the upside is only off. 0.06%. The downside, the S&P off six tenths of a percent and NASDAQ feeling a full 1.3% to the dark side. So an intriguing day, obviously biased to the dark side, but there are glimmers of hope, glimmers of optimism. We'll see if Uncle Mike talks again, if he can, if he can boost these markets out of their hidey hole and maybe get some, get some green back out there. Of course, as we kick off the show, we were seeing Vol come in pretty aggressively, a nice exhale in the vol space, and as everything turned red, the vol kind of turned back up again, bit of an inhale again. When we kicked off the show, VIX had been about in the 17 handle earlier this morning. We kicked off the show, it was back at a 19 handle, 1915 when we kicked off the show. That was down only about two and three quarters points from uh, our last show. It was down about four not that long ago, so we'll see. See how it holds up throughout the show. Will it shoot up? Will it come back down? We shall see. Uh, VVIX at about a 115. We kicked off the show. That's down a little over eight, about eight and a quarter points from Monday's show. VXX to the downside, but a lot less than it was earlier this morning. It was off over, I think, almost three points. Now it's off about a little under two. I should say about 1.85 points, down to about 1835 when we kicked off the show. UBXY was shy of the 12 handle, back up north of it now. It's down only 1.8 points from Monday's show. It was down substantially more than that earlier in the session. It was at about a 12.20 when we kicked off the show. And VolQ getting about a point and a half back. VolQ at about a 22 and a half when we kicked off the show. It was down about five from Monday's show. Not that long ago. Now it's down about three and a half points. Will that stay the same? Will that stay the course? Will Vol continue to firm up throughout the show? We shall find up. And we know what firms up whenever he talks. It's the markets. Let's go out to the land of wealth and to Uncle Mike. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what's lighting up your tape on this kind of mixed to not really an Uncle Mike type of day, sir? Yeah, it's interesting. We have the Dow just kind of sitting there, uh, just a tiny bit above water. We have the S&P down a little over a half a percent. Uh, So it looks like just what's dragging, I mean, not looks like what is what's dragging this market down. It's uh, definitely not the Dow, that's for sure. Uh, What it looks like we have here, though, is uh, tech is just selling off again. And what's interesting to see is that uh, we've had this tech and 10-year note correlation, meaning they kind of moved with each other for a little while. And so the concept is that if uh, yields go higher, that could take money out of tech. And that's kind of, in a lot of ways, that we've had a little bit of a, a relationship with that. But I'm just looking at XLK down 1.5% of the day. Definitely down. Uh, XLK is the ETF that tracks the technology sector. Definitely down way more than the S&P 500, almost three times as, as much as it is. Uh, but on here, we actually are a little bit positive in the buying of the 10 year note. So what that tells me is a couple things. Number one, uh, means that perhaps the 10-year note might be a, towards a bottom in the near-term range. Uh, the other thing with which it tells me is that the correlation of tech and the 10-year note might be going away, and it might mean that the sell-off uh, that we've been having recently in the 10-year might be uh, getting a little bit close to the end. Uh, but with tech, uh, this might be a little bit closer to a pullback on it to where it might be a buying opportunity now that we don't have that 10-year correlation. Now, the other thing that I'm seeing with this is that we do have a little bit of a spike up in utilities, not spike up, but we're up a little bit in utilities, half a percent. Industrials are up roughly half a percent. And then, of course, we have consumer discretionaries down a percent. But what's interesting to see with this is that it's like the old bellwether of uh, energy. Energy is still higher on the day. Uh, With energy being higher, uh, it's, it's higher by just a little bit. but it is still higher. And we have natural gas getting the tar beat out of it today, down almost 10%. And we have crude oil down 26 cents. That's not that much. But uh, with natural gas going down as much as it is, uh, I think it's interesting that we still have buyers in energy on something that's uh, going down this much. Oh, and by the way, Bitcoin sucks. Uh, It's down 2% on the day. That's what I'm seeing on the day. All right. <laughs> you can't let things go, can you, Mr. Mr. Uncle Mike? You got to kick a dog when it's down. Send all your hate mail care to Uncle Mike at BitcoinSucks.com. 
his new hot <laughs> URL that he purchased in between episodes. Right, sir? How much did you pay that squatter for? I didn't pay anything, but it's like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm really loving the new uh, Cobra Kai on Netflix. I'm all caught up now. And uh, so it's like what, what <laughs> Danny said to him, what the Cobra Kai said, you couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? And I Keep, can't. Keeping it on that 80s theme. Isn't that a, a freaking great show? If you had told me, and I remember first hearing about it years ago, and it was a YouTube show. I said, what? They brought back Karate Kid, and it's all about the the bad guy dojo and that loser kid guy, and that's all about him. And I, I would say that's insane. And it's a YouTube show, a YouTube TV show. Forget about it. It sounds like the worst thing on the planet. And they have exceeded expectations at every turn, sir. I love the show. I can't wait until next New Year's Eve to see the next season. I'm just – I bet we – my wife and I binge watched it the first night for a season for the last season. So I love it. Yeah. I just caught up in my, actually my family wanted to get into it. So they, they, they wanted to watch it. So I've actually been rewatching it now for them and we're all caught up and now we're diving into the, uh, to the fourth season. We just started it recently. We were kind of saving it. So yeah, it's surprisingly good. <laughs> the credit kid guy, Ralph Macchio and the bad guy, Johnny Lawrence, they look like they've aged maybe five days since 1984, don't they? <laughs> it's impressive. They still look pretty good. So, Like, at one point, doesn't Ralph Macchio say, I'm the same age as Mr. Miyagi was when he met me? So he's the same age as Pat Morita. He does not look like Pat freaking Morita did when he did in Karate Kid. So, yeah, a different beast out there. Again, we could we could spend a, a whole a whole hour on a Karate Kid rabbit hole. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, intriguing stuff. Check it out if you have. Now it's on Netflix, and now you have no excuse. You don't need to be a youtube is one of the selling points they had of youtube premium you get no ads do some back background streams and of course you could get this cobra kai show and so that was that was their selling point early on it seemed like a ridiculous selling point but it turned out to be a decent one and now that's on netflix everyone and their mother like how you folks in the how you folks in the secret club you liking yourself a little cobra kai you seem to be a bunch that would be into a show like that <laughs> well one last thing uncle mike i can't leave it alone one last thing they live in this crazy fantasy land of a world where there's violence everywhere. There are karate fights on every street corner, yet there are zero ramifications for any of those. <laughs> the police are never involved. Authorities are never involved in any way, sir. Not at all. You, you, you gotta, it's, it's, the, it's those bad guys from the Cobra Kai. They're, you're not protected. You gotta learn how to fight for yourself. <laughs> the only way to defend yourself in the Cobra Kai world is to learn a version of karate. That's the only way. The authorities... That's the one lesson you can take away. The authorities will not save you in a karate battle. <laughs> That's our lesson from Cobra Kai. Oh, we could we could spend more time on Cobra Kai. Let's get on into the madness. Speaking of madness, they're not joining us today, but Valman through the lens of the Rock Lobster has been beaming into me while Uncle Mike was talking with all of his uh, observations here through our show chat, and he wanted me to convey to you folks out there that Valman is concerned right now. Not quite. Not quite breaking out the logins. We're not quite in the danger zone, even though I am ready. I got some logins queued up because, quite frankly, why don't you have logins queued up all the time? I'm ready to go into that danger zone at any moment. He says we're not not until about 20 do we need to start hitting the logins. But he is starting to get concerned. He thinks Vix should have been going down, was going down today. Uh, but in his in his terminology, the Rock Lobster terminology, he says the market is getting a bit jiggy. <laughs> so things to keep an eye on out there from the rock lobster's perspective he's beaming into us as he's doing whatever the hell he's doing over there at tradesaurus you know what's going on right now the markets weren't doing a heck of a lot i bet you now with this worm turning a little bit if you check back in on them in let's say i don't know five or ten minutes it might be a bit of a different story because vix right now at about one hundred ninety thousand contracts doesn't sound like a lot Remember, that ADV has continued to just suck down ever since it, it crested over 700,000. It's down another 10,000 since our last show. It's down to 433 now. So 190 is actually almost to halfway of your day's worth of volume. So that's not nothing. <laughs> and we'll see if they get another, another burst, another second gas like we're seeing in the market to the downside or to the upside in ball. That could drive some more paper. We can see that ADV actually going back up again. Spy at about 3.2 million right now. It's ADV. 5.04 million. So SPY already half of its ADV. Uh, beyond that, S at 605, its ADV kind of holding firm around one and a half million. So the S surprisingly light, given the fact that SPY is doing so much paper out there right now. And small caps, at least through the IWM lens, looking pretty light as well. The ADV down there to 774,000. So not even really at half of its ADV either. 
but again, intriguing stuff. And again, that uh, just, just a month and a half ago, the ADB was about 500,000. So that would have been a pretty robust day right now. So again, it just depends on your frame of reference. If you want more from small caps and maybe how they stack up, maybe including some surprise developments from a correlation perspective, we wanted to do this on last week's year in review on TWIFO. Uh, the tools were getting updated, so we couldn't do it. We're going to do it this week instead. Uh, we always love to run kind of our check-ins on correlations for the past year, see what's been going on. And we also were going to extend it. We're also going to go back to the beginning of the pandemic so we could see real numbers, real data, maybe some surprises, what products actually were highly positively correlated, maybe some negative surprises. What the hell did Bitcoin do? Is it really correlated? Is it negatively correlated? What's the deal? We're going to find out the answers to all of that and a bunch more a little bit later today, about an hour and 10 minutes from now on Twifo. Now let's move on into the single names out here. What's lighting it up out there today? You know, the single names are telling a little bit of a different story than the indices. If I had run this maybe a minute or so later, we would have been at probably about exactly 300,000 to break into the top 10. As it was, it's 298. That gets you to lucid. At around 300K, that's a pretty robust day. We're not talking 150, 180. So the single names are putting up numbers, even if the indices are, are kind of mixed. Number nine, our old friends across the street, Boeing, back in the top 10. They've been making some headlines of late. Got usurped by Airbus recently as the largest uh, airplane manufacturer out there. Other headlines for Boeing of late. I think Brian was even talking about Boeing recently on his show for an interesting candidate out there. So a lot of action out there in Boeing. And good for number nine out there today, 300 and 44,000 contract. Let's see, where's Boeing right now? 224.66, up about three and a quarter percent today. So a nice pop for them out there in Boeing over the last six months, of course. You know, it's been a bit of a topsy turvy saga. It topped out around 240. So it isn't that far, 239 and a half. It isn't that far over the last six months from its high. Of course, 52 week high is 278. It's a bit of a ways from that, but it did bottom out recently at 188 on December 20th. So a nice little pop from them, 188 to 224 in the span of the past uh, about three weeks or so. So a nice pop for Boeing out there. Number nine, or I should say number eight, good old telephone, what the old timers used to call it, a.k.a. AT&T, 351,000 contracts on the tape today, listeners, 2699, up about 2% on the day. Number seven, we got good old softy, good old Microsoft back in the top 10. They're on again, they're off again. Today, they're off again, off 2.5%, taking a bit of a drubbing, but good enough for the top 10 and hitting the number seven spot, 356,000 contracts out there. Number number six, we're going out here to a name we haven't seen in the top 10. It's been ages. This is Taiwan Semiconductor, ticker symbol TSM, trading today 141.91, almost 142, up nearly 10 bucks or about 7.3%. This name doing 458,000 contracts for the number six spot on our top 10 list. Number five, we've got AMD, one half of the symbol twins. Will its friend, will its compatriot, will its twin make it into the top 10 today? Spoiler alert, no. <laughs> so once again, AMD, we're in the crown of the symbol twins at least. 134, about 30 or so, off about 2.3% today. Number four, it's NVIDIA. You know they're in there on any given day. 593,000. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Number three. Yes, I said number three is Apple. <laughs> Only 886,000. A paltry, a meager 886,000 contracts on the tape. Apple down about 1%, a little bit shy of 174 right now. Listeners, what could possibly usurp the big dog, the king of the roost out there today? Well, First off, it's this freaking meme name <laughs> called Ford, up another 4%, up to about 25 and a half right now. This thing is just on fire, in spite of the fact that, uh, what was it, Kathy Wood coming out recently and just saying, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you should be buying Tesla instead of Ford. She, she found it infuriating that people were buying Ford. But the market's saying, you know, the heck with you, Kathy Wood, we're buying it. Up 4% today, and 25 and a half right now in Fordland. My goodness. What a run Ford has been on. Just, let's just go back since the start of the year. The start of the year, 2177 is where it opened. At the end of the year, 20 and three quarters. So it's up 470 <laughs> just from the end of the year. My goodness, man, Ford. Is it a meme stock? Well, performance-wise, it's certainly acting like it. And it's actually tied with our number one. So they're both really kind of number one right now. Tesla, both of them at 1.15 
million contracts right now. Tesla off about 4%, still north of the 1,000 level, 1062 to be precise. But man, Ford and Tesla going neck and neck. They can't make enough, I guess, electric F-150s in Ford land, and that's going to take it to Tesla, apparently, at least from an options perspective today. Uh, crazy stuff going on. We're about to kick off the crazy in earnings season, listeners. You saw Tilray on Monday. We saw KB Homes yesterday. Today, we got Delta Airlines. Tomorrow is really where the season kind of kicks into high gear. Tomorrow, we've got City, We've got BlackRock. We've got Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan Chase. And lucky for you, listeners, because we like you guys so much. We've got, in fact, the first ones, really, the first earnings move results reports we have for the entire season, updated earnings move reports, so the predicted straddles, and uh, can't really have a season yet because it's just starting, but we're getting there as well. So all these will be hot in your little hands on the website. Just, just came in hot off the presses from the folks over there at Orats. You guys should have them soon, if not now. Uh, let's get on over to see what we got here. Today's earnings move results reports. Who was popping off today? Well, we had KB Homes yesterday after the bell. They were at 42.38 going into their announcement. They were pricing in 5.3%. And get this, listeners, they delivered 13.5%. Wow. Is it going to be one of those cycles? Man, that would be interesting. Over 2x <laughs> their straddle. And they're still up there, very higher right now. They're 48.85, up 15 and a quarter percent right now. So, man, they're doing 3x their straddle right now. That is an impressive bit of movement out there. Wow. Uh, let's see if we can keep that going. Let's go out to Delta Airlines as well. They were this morning before the bell. 4061 is where they were trading. They were pricing in three point, excuse me, 4.1 percent, and they delivered 3.6 percent. So, that's more along the lines of what we've come to expect, and it's still right around there right now. So it hasn't really – it's actually given up a little bit since then. It's probably about 3.4% now. So, yeah, a whole lot of nothing from Delta Airlines. But KB Homes, man, home market apparently popping off. And so, so far, listeners, <laughs> with a whopping seven names reporting so far in the season, our current season stands at 170%. <laughs> I want to save the screenshot and just just use that for the rest of the season. 170. Imagine if we got there for the season. What kind of insane season that would be if the entire season averaged out at 170%. My goodness. So uh, right now, listeners, a rock'em, sock'em robots season. Will that continue? Again, we're getting some real names popping off tomorrow. That'll give us a better indication. So far, again, it just started, so no new earnings trades to report, but we'll let you know when those are popping off. Let's look really quickly. Updated reports for the big names popping off tomorrow. A city again before the bell tomorrow. 67 and a quarter is where they were trading. The straddle, two bucks. In the past, they moved about a buck and a half. So still a little juicy, still a little rich in city land. Let's go out to JP Morgan, see if they're following suit. Also tomorrow before the bell, 168 and a half is where they were trading. 372 is what they were pricing in. The past they moved 329. So about half a buck rich in JP Morgan, which again is almost the exact same price level of premium as we're seeing in City, which is interesting. On a percentage basis, obviously a little bit less, but intriguing. Nonetheless, let's look here really quickly. Wells Fargo tomorrow, 56 and a half is where they were trading. 206 is what they were pricing in. The past they moved 224. So Wells Fargo going the other direction. Taking taking some off the top there. PNC tomorrow as well. 225 is where they were trading 607 is what they were pricing in the past. They moved 523, so they're pricing in a little over three quarters of a dollar. So that's that's a surprising amount of juice out there. So again, a lot of uh, a lot of names set to pop off starting tomorrow. You know, that's always the big start to the sale. We got interactive brokers tomorrow as well. Let's go to them really quickly. 7735 is where they were trading. 279 is what they were pricing in the past. They moved 188, so nearly a full dollar's worth of extra juice in IB and it's a sub $3 straddle. So that's a substantial amount of additional premium out there. Wow. That's, that's interesting. So seems like the order of the day. Let's go to Goldman Sachs really quickly too. Goldman's tomorrow before the bell. 390.31 is where they were trading. They're pricing in 1298 listeners. So pretty much 13 bucks in the past. They moved 879. So Goldman pricing in a whole heck of a lot more juice. Wow. Hmm. If this is, an indication of the kind of season we're looking at. Again, these are financials. So financials are in a bit of a uniquely volatile time right now with the Fed about to go on the march. But 
Interesting. Wow. 13 bucks in the past. They moved 879. That is a heck of a lot more juice, about four and a quarter. <laughs> wow. That's uh, interesting. You think that's merited, listeners? Is Goldman going to blow the doors off? We shall see. Speaking of blowing the doors off, before we get to the odd block, Mr. Uncle Mike, I have an extra treat for you. Are you ready? Can you handle an extra treat in your life, sir? I can always handle an extra treat. All right. Let's do it then because it's that time of year. You know, we like to usually check in with the trends, the Google Trends data. We do it twice a year, usually at the beginning of the year and at the middle of the year to see how things are evolving. We look at some of the more popular options-related search terms. We have a lot of data. We see the options volume. Obviously, from an options volume perspective, things are blowing the doors off. But let's look at some other metrics and see how those are stacking up. So, Uncle Mike, are you ready for our check-in to kick off 2022 here with Google Trends data, sir? I'm ready. All right, let's start things off pretty basic, pretty generic. Not going to go down the rabbit hole, particular strategies. Let's just start as basic as it comes, options. Obviously, there are other things people could be searching for when they're searching for options, so... We take this one with a bit of a grain of salt. And also, Google Trends data, what it shows you, listeners, is it shows you where the peak level of interest was on that graph. And that tops out at 100. And then and it only goes for the past year. At least that's how we ran. You can extend it. We're doing it for the past year. And then where it is now will be some percentage of that peak level. Unless right now is the peak. The peak for options, to so just option search interest. Just the term options. It was late January of last year, January 24th to 30th. So that was the apex of the graph. Again, not surprising. That's when VIX topped out at 30, what was it, 37, I believe. And uh, we saw a lot of a lot of excitement there. The meme stocks are kicking off. So options, straight up option searches peaked at 100 on January 24th and 30th. Right now, as we ran it today, we're at about half that level, at about a 50, which is kind of interesting. So uh, the option searches have come off quite a bit and let's see where are the top destinations right now the top five destinations for places where people are searching for options uh, number five is dc so the district of columbia remember these are done per capita so they may end up biasing a little bit towards some of these smaller areas like the district of columbia you get three people searching for options in dc it's going to put it up the map hence andrew putting maine at the top of the list for options searching for a couple of years because he was doing so much he made up for the rest of the state uh, number four washington so the state of Washington, obviously. Number three, we got Minnesota. Number two, Colorado. And number one, North Dakota. Again, going back to what I was saying earlier, some of these smaller areas. If you're the one guy searching for options in North Dakota, well done. You put it on the map. Mr. Uncle Mike, what are your thoughts on options general interest peaking in January of last year, now at about half that level, and North Dakota taking the top spots well, I mean, we're going this time of year, so what the heck else are you going to do in North Dakota? You got the ice fishing during the morning and then in the evening. What are you going to do? You go look for some options online. You want to learn about something different. All right. The, the North Dakota Board of Tourism can send your angry emails to Uncle Mike at stcharleswealth.com. <laughs> I love North Dakota. North Dakota is a great state. Congratulations on the phenomenal football team they have at NDSU. They win the FCS National Championship like almost every year, it seems. And uh, they got amazing things going on up there in the Fargo Dome. If you want to get your email to him faster, send it to Uncle Mike at BitcoinSucks.com. That goes straight, straight to his inbox. All right, let's go to the next one here. Let's go a little bit farther down the rabbit hole. Listen, a little bit more specific. Let's go to options trading. If you're searching for options trading, 99% chance you're searching for Options trading related things. I don't know what other things could even really cross into options for trading something else. Maybe there are other things that could sneak in there, but it's pretty specific. Options trading. Uh, so the peak again, the same, the same time, January twenty fourth to thirtieth of last year. Uncle Mike, the level of options trading search interest right now it's a thirteen, sir. It's fallen off the map almost entirely. I mean, it's just that it's 13. I mean, if, if it, and that's because the 13 is above the 10, correct? Well, 100 would be the peak. That was January of last year. Right now oh, we're I'm at sorry. a 13. I, I, I misunderstood. I apologize. Yeah, that's not good for option trading. No. Apparently people are just getting lazy and just writing in options. They don't need to write trading anymore. <laughs> it is, and I take it with a grain of salt, it is, you know, seasonality, end of the year, beginning of the year. So people are just kind of, usually this is the quiet period anyway. So that probably accounts for some of it. But we've seen a general downtrend in options trading searches throughout the entirety of the year since it peaked back in January of last year. And the top five destinations for options trading, number five, Colorado, 
Number four, Maryland. Number three, good old NY. So New York City in there, obviously a big destination for options. Number two, Montana. I'm hearing good things about Helena maybe coming online as the new options mecca. Clearly they're doing well. Number two. And number one, Mr. Uncle Mac, what do you think is the number one Google search destination in the U.S. for options trading? So take a guess. Well, let's go with North Dakota. Again. I was just going to say, it's not, I'll give you a hint. It's not North Dakota. <laughs> oh, the bison let me down. Try another far away destination. Idaho. Even farther. Hawaii. Hawaii. All right. Well, that's fun. The, the Rainbow Warriors. Yes. <laughs> you know all the mascots there. Well, well done. <laughs> I heard that recently. Someone told me that the Rainbow Warriors. That's an interesting name for a for an athletic franchise. Let's go out to... Now, sometimes when you're searching for this stuff, Google will recommend other popular strategies that were searched for by people who were searching for this. And they recommended options strategies. So we went down that road. And options strategies peaked out the same week, January 24th to 30th of last year that was obviously a hot week and right now similar level to options trading at about a 16 so slightly higher so not a lot of love for options trading or option strategies right now in terms of your top five my old stopping grounds number five ct connecticut number four california that's a big one you don't see it popping on our radar too often obviously the per capita thing makes it a little bit more challenging uh, number three, D.C., getting back in there. <laughs> the one guy in D.C. is doing a lot of yeoman's work. Uh, number two, New Jersey. And number one, New York. Mr. Uncle Mike, this one, at least from an overall destinations ranking, makes a little bit more sense to me. Would you agree, sir, as opposed to Hawaii and North Dakota? I would think so, but you never know. I mean, in New York, they're all stock people, so they're a different breed out there in New York. Us Chicago folks, we love the options. Stocks and bonds, who needs them? We got the options, baby. Let's go out a little bit more specific. Let's go to covered calls. Let's see what kind of covered call interest is going on. Uh, Covered calls, it may not surprise you to learn, also peaked January 20th. Everything peaked January 24th to 30th of last year. Right now, about the same level as options trading, right around a 17 right now. So they've all had pretty much a general downtrend. And if you're wondering where are the hot spots for covered calls in the U.S. listeners, number five is Virginia. Number four, back to Washington State. Number three, CT getting in there again. Two. Two of the top fives for Connecticut. A lot of covered call traders in Connecticut. Number two, New Jersey. And then number one, Connecticut's neighbor. It's even smaller cousin, if you can believe it. Rhode Island. Uncle Mike, Rhode Island, the top spot in the U.S. right now for covered call research. What's say? The people from Brown University, got to love it. Uh, I remember I did a show in Boston one time when I worked for Options Express. I wanted to visit a state I'd never been to before, so I drove to Providence and had lunch there. Beautiful place. We have a chat saying, I wonder if it's regulators and legislators doing those searches in D.C. You know what? I hope you are correct, Mr. Age. I hope that is what they are. I hope they are looking to inform themselves. Dare I say it, perhaps even listening to shows like this will become much more well-versed in the topic of options and derivatives for their regulatory purposes. I, the cynic in me says that's not the case, but hey, I could hope. I could hope. Uh, Uncle Mike, this one's for you as well here. Google actually recommended this one, so I thought for Uncle Mike this would be a fun one to add. What say you do? we do a little bit of crypto options analytics, sir? Let's do this. Can you handle it? Are you ready? Is Bitcoin, oh, I'm ready. Can BitcoinSucks.com handle the resulting traffic? <laughs> Let's do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> Crypto options trading search results. Listeners, this one, weirdly enough, had two peaks, two apexes. You know, I haven't seen that with any other graph. So maybe the data point's a little bit fewer for this one. Uh, let's see. They had two peaks of 100, April 18th to 24th and May 9th through 15th. So if you know, if you watch the crypto market, markets, listeners, that was the period. April was the beginning of that sell-off, that aggressive sell-off we saw through the year there we saw a really aggressive sell-off in the crypto space it continued into may i'll have to check and see if may 9th to 15th is when we started to turn a little bit or if the sell-off was still going at that point but that was definitely the sell-off period and uncle mike you'll be happy to know this the interest in crypto options trading right now is zero <laughs> so i guess so my website wouldn't be good even even if it was my website or, or your website is working right? your website is doing what it's supposed to do Clearly not enough data points. Google recommended this one, so people are clearly searching for it, but I guess not in enough not enough data to actually give us a number for right now. So <laughs> intriguing stuff. If you want to know the top, they can only muster a top four 
for crypto options trading. So again, I guess the data point's a little bit lighter here. Number four, New York. Number three, California. Number two, Texas. So I guess the meatball's driving a lot of crypto surges down there. Number one is Florida. So Uncle Mike, I guess the message for you is do not retire to Florida because it is the crypto options trading mecca of the U.S. Hey, I'm going to Hawaii. I mean, with the option searches there, uh, I'll give me a little bit of a place out in Kauai. Um, that's where I'm heading. Um. All right. And we are heading into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. All right, everybody, let's get weird. Let's get wild. Let's unleash the eye of Sauron, see where it fixes its steely gaze. Uncle Mike going to have to play in the odd block today. So put on your unusual activity pants, sir. Kick it off. A newcomer here to the odd block. Uh, This is Sally Beauty Holdings, ticker symbol SBH. Uh, This is obviously a beauty retailer with revenues of about $4 billion annually. So they're, they're selling some beauty. Quite a bit of it, actually. Uh, trading right now, $18.19. Let's see what they're up to today. Up about a quarter today, so a little over one, about 1.3%. And on the year, they've had a pretty decent year as well. A year ago, they were trading thirteen fifty five, And then they got caught up in the meme madness by March 12th. They were trading 21 and about a quarter. Then they hit their high for the year, about twenty five sixty six. That was on May 7th. And since then, they've been mostly trending down. Looks like they bottomed out for the first time on October 29th at 15 and a quarter. Then they turned around again and rallied pretty hard by November 22nd. So in less than a month, from October 29th to November 22nd, they were trading nearly 22 bucks again, 21.71. So they went from, what was it, 15 and a quarter to 21.71. Then they gave most of it back, got down to about 17.61. So they've been bouncing in the mid to, in the mid 17 half to a little bit shy of 20 range. For the better part of uh, the last month or so since mid-December. That's where you find us right now, right around 1820, right in, right in the middle of that range out here. And Mr. Uncle Mike, it sounds like someone thinks there is more juice ahead here for Sally Beauty Holdings, and they're not messing around. They're coming in right now, this morning, buying 2,500 of the Jan 17 half. So these are pretty much 70 cent in the money calls for a buck. So they're paying... 30 cents worth of extra juice, the premium out there, listeners. That's about a 49, almost a 50 vol, listeners. The earnings are not before this expires. Earnings are on February 3rd. This is not an earnings play. And the stock was right about here when they put these up. Mr. Uncle Mike, an intriguing choice to kick off the new year here in Sally Beauty. They're only getting a week. This is the weekly now. They're buying a weekly call, paying a buck for it. Granted, it's got 70 cents worth of juice. So they're really only putting that 30 cents at risk. Right now, at least, if all things stay the same. So what are your thoughts here on a meaty, meaty in-the-money call purchase to start the year here in Sally Beauty Holdings, sir? I mean, it could be a lot of things. Uh, In in the retail world, you'd think, okay, that's just somebody that wanted to just buy some calls and be greedy with it. But this could also be a major hedge fund that's hedging a short position that they have to hedge or uh, create some type of a margin freedom, so to speak, for a while to get into something else. It could be a lot of things with it. Uh, the other thing that it always could be is somebody just wanting to be bullish on it. But uh, you never know. Uh, I'm hoping, I, I mean, it's a kind of a high risk trade considering you have the 30 cents at risk from the standpoint of extrinsic value for a week uh, for something of that price. I think that's a little bit much, quite frankly. Uh, so part of me is hoping this is a hedge on a short position. But uh, you never know. You never know. Indeed. So we can come back to these. Don't have to wait too long, listeners. We'll find out next week (laughs) if this person was smart or if they threw some good money away here. Let's let's speak of keeping an eye on things, see if they threw good money away. Let's go out here to pay off some of our trades we've been watching for a while. This one's been on our radar for a while. We first started talking about this back on June 7th of last year. So quite some time in our to-be-watched category, listeners. This is DocuSign, ticker symbol DOCU, D-O-C-U. At the time, we profiled a 5,000 lot of the Nove. Well, before we get to that, let's do a quick um, a quick update here. A year ago, it was trading 
DocuSign. Had a nice run, got up to 314. That was like it was around July of last year. And it was kind of hovering there to those levels until, we'll get to that in a second. But our trade right around that time, we talked about actually before then, it was in June. At the time, the stock was 240.69. People, or paper, I should say, picking up. So these were these were interesting. These were roughly forty dollar in the money calls. They paid forty nine and a half dollars for them. So a similar trade to what we saw just now, just longer term and a little bit meatier <laughs> there. But going the in the money call route, it was about a forty and a half vol. Uh, there were earnings on September second, so it wasn't really an earnings play. There were earnings baked into this, but there were a long way to go. Roughly three months away from this trade, so they had a long time before the earnings. Looks like these things worked out. So they ended up doubling the OI on the 16th. So a week later, a little over a week later, uh, when the options were about 60 bucks. So they bought 5,000 more, total of 10,000, a second leg for 60 bucks. So now they're averaging out in the 50s there for the prices between the two. And then they came back, the earnings I said were on September 2nd. They came back on November 10th and closed these calls out. Uh, Remember, they bought them for around around 50 odd bucks and uh, they sold them out for 6524 so they did all right on these the stock was 266 at the time so uh, they made about 1574 on that first leg the first leg the initial 5000 so that's 7.9 million you can double that to roughly not quite 14 because they didn't make exactly that much on the next one uh, but about almost 8 million on that first probably up to about 12 million if you add in the second leg and then they bought 10,000 more. They put the money back to work. They bought 10,000 more of the Jan 250s, the two halves, for about 29 bucks, 28.99. That was, let's see, that was on November 10th. And we've been watching that ever since as well. The vol for that second leg was 42.70. So they made some money. And then they put it back to work and then some, buying the 250 calls. So a higher strike this time, yet again. And it seems like that one was ill-timed. Because shortly after that trade, that trade went up on November 10th. On December 2nd, the stock just took a bath. It went from 233 down to 135. It sold off 100 handles in the span of a session. That's pretty bad, listeners. <laughs> That's a crash. 100 points. They're wearing it now on that second leg, Mr. Uncle Mike. Uh, so that 29 bucks they spent... Yeah, those are gone. They ended up giving up on those. They got 25 cents back for them. So they lost 29 bucks, I should say, 10,000 times listeners. <laughs> so that's, oh, $29 million. I mean, you're talking serious money here that they just threw away. So Mr. Uncle Mike, they made money on that first leg. I'm going to be charitable. And it was $8 million on that first leg. Probably figure around 12, but if you add in the second 5,000 lot. And then they lost Roughly 30 million. So they're still out about 18 million, Mr. Uncle Mike, on this trade. This is, uh, this is a sizable ouchie, sir. Yeah, I would say so. Um, uh, when, when you have things like that, uh, like I said earlier, I hope this is part of a hedge of a much bigger picture. And they're just like, oh, we lost a little bit of the hedge, but we made $4 billion over here or something like that. But uh I don't think it is. So uh, just like uh, I think he used to say it very frequently on this segment, the big money, the big money isn't necessarily the smart money. In that case, this is this is definitely not the smart money. They they this is one of the more sizable losers we profiled in a while here, listeners. Yeah, just swinging for the fences on that upside. It, it works until it doesn't, listeners. In this case, that $100 sell off in the stock, that's going to leave a mark. And when you go for meteor options, that's also, these were $16 in the money when they bought them. Again, that's also leaving a mark. That's effectively a quasi-stock substitution at that point. So, unfortunately, he ended up wearing, I don't see a second leg for this. or Really, I should say a third leg. So, I think this guy might just be done, which is understandable if you lost that much money. Uh, whoever's watching over you might be saying, yeah, I think you're done with DocuSign, at least for now. All right, let's go back to one more review here. This goes back to November 11th. To a name we all know and love or perhaps hate, this is Disney, ticker symbol Diz, D-I-S. Uh, let's see. And these are these are puts that are about to go out, but we, we have so many going out in January. we got to start in some of them now. Back on November 11th, listeners, we profiled 14,000 of the Jan 145 puts going up paper, crushing the bid for $2.26. That was about a 28 vol. Again, 14,000 times, so pretty sizable. Uh, this was right after the last announcement of earnings for Disney. So they were coming in to crush the 
last bit of juice they could get. The stock was 159 and a half when they sold these. And if you look back, uh, they had to sweat for a little bit on these. They sold, like I said, the 145 strike. The stock on December 1st was 142.15. So it pretty almost broke the 142 strike. So these were actually in the money for a brief period. So it looks like they were getting what they wanted. They were buying some Diz stock <laughs> right around the 142 level. And they were they these puts were trading, I'm assuming, far more than the two and a quarter that they sold them for. And now they've waited patiently. These puts are still open. Disney stock back up to 156.16. So those puts looking a lot safer. Obviously, a week to go still, so anything could happen. Look at our friend from the top of the segment. He's banking on a lot happening over the course of this week. But right now, Mr. Uncle Mike, I'm going to put these puts in the safe category. And the paper up a little over three, about 3.1 million on this line in the sand in Disney that was crossed, but then crossed again. And now they are safe, Uncle Mike. Uh, that's good that they're safe, but uh, like I always say about lines in the sand, I'll reference Yosemite Sam. If you keep stepping across that line too many times, eventually you fall off the cliff. And let's see if your emails and questions will fall off a cliff. Probably not. You're usually pretty good as we head on into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for... The Mail Block. All right, let's get into it, listeners. And before we dive into your questions, let's let's pay off some of your feedback right now in terms of what you're thinking on our question of the week. Let's see. Let's go to last week's first. We asked you to kick off the new year. Where do you think VIX is going to close? We gave you a bunch of ranges. Looks like a lot of you were in the – I said about – I think that's about a 17 half is where I was feeling to end the year. It looks like most of you were feeling in a similar range as well. You picked the frothy range of 15 to 1999 with about 42% going that way. The second the second largest was Uncle Mike's range, quiet below 15 at about a 28%, 18% for elevated, 20 to about 25, and only about 11% for very elevated, which is north of 25. So a lot of you thinking what I was thinking, VIX is going to end the year kind of in the same range that it ended this year. Will we be correct? Only got to wait a year to find out. <laughs> Let's get on out now. Speaking of waiting till the end of the year, our question of the week this week. Give you four choices as we are wont to do. We kicked off the week. SBX was at 4,600. VIX was at 22. Bitcoin is at 40,000. And WTI was at 78. We said to you, quite simply, you got to buy a 10% out of the money call on one of these that expires at the end of the year. So obviously looking for a nice 10% plus rally. In one of these underlyings, which would it be? And Mr. Uncle Mike, I should not reveal the numbers yet. If you have a vote, have at it. And then more importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for, sir? I'll say SPX on both fronts. How did I know you're going to go? If we had thrown gold in there, or maybe silver, that might have lured you to the dark side more. But uh, SPX for Uncle Mike. And uh, you are the winner, winner, chicken dinner right now, Uncle Mike. That is what people are picking. 34.5% saying SPX slash SPY. And a tie for second, which is weird. Both 25.5% for VIX and WTI. So VIX having come off substantially since we posted this. Uh, WTI off a little bit as well, but still looking good. And then Bitcoin, Uncle Mike, your nemesis, only 14.5%, sir. Ooh. So your uh, campaign of Bitcoin sucks appears to be working, sir. What say you? Must be. Ha! That's excellent. Happy to hear from the audience. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of hearing from the audience, we got people chiming in here. We got James chiming in. He wanted to mention James Lovell about the trading activity we talked about last time. I'll say this one, the Rock Lobster's back, because he and I were talking about this one that strange kind of credit spread activity you mentioned before we'll come back to this one next week there uh next week there james who was that james let's go to this one from josh here mr uncle mike you'll like this one he says i've seen people recommending that if your position is losing money you should buy something else so that your deltas are even so if your delta is let's say minus 400 you go over one strike and sell enough Maybe he means puts and get long or sell enough. You know, it probably means buy deltas uh, that your delta of your position is around positive 400. I don't get it. What does that do? Uncle Mike, do you agree with this hypothesis that if your position is losing money, you should buy something else so that your deltas are even? In this case, he recommends going over one strike. So I'm guessing he means out one month and uh, and making effectively a delta neutral calendar. sir. If it's going against me, I like to get out typically or. Uh, perhaps roll it down if I want to get more 
if I'm long premium, if it's going against me, I like to get out. If I'm short premium, if I still want to have bullish exposure, then I'll roll it down or roll it in some way, shape or form. But uh, typically that's I, I try and keep it simple. And uh, if it's going against you, there's the, the old saying, don't throw good money after bad. Sometimes it works, but more times than not, it seems not to. Yeah, I'm with you. If it's going against you, people want these magic silver bullets to turn a losing trade into a winner. Oftentimes, it's just throwing more good money after bad. So if you're going to have this rolling strategy, you got to set this up at the outset and know exactly what you're going to do. Willy nilly legging into calendars <laughs> on some sort of delta neutral basis to try to offset a loser. I can't really get too enthusiastic about that either. Close it out. Live to fight another day. If you're going to do this, keep it simple. Yeah, let's just keep it simple. Close it out. Live to fight another day. And if you're going to be rolling, have a very clear strategy, define it ahead of time, not kind of on the fly because you read about it on a, on a forum somewhere. All right, let's keep on rolling. Let's go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on until our next episode, which actually won't be on Monday, Monday, Martin Luther King holiday here in the U.S., so of course, uh, no trading then. So our next episode, Uncle Mike, will be Thursday. So what, sir, are you keeping an eye on all the way until next Thursday, sir? Well, I want to see if this market can go positive on the year. We've been negative all year, and so... Uh, with my strategy, I have to, for my aggressive strategy, I have to be very much, um, uh, very cautious. I have a three month far out of the money put spread going, and then I have a couple of other things going for uh, the end of the year, but uh, they're all pretty. The, the, if, if the market were to expire where it is right now, the, those strategies would break even. So, I mean, I have it's kind of boring for me. So I'd like to see the market go positive so I can get back in on it a little bit more. Uh, so watching that, uh, also watching to see if the 10 year note is at a bottom. And um, I'll, I, I think you need to watch the VIX at this point too. We're back in the teens. I don't know if it's in the danger zone. And uh, you know, by the way, the other thing that I did is I changed all my usernames for all of my accounts to Kenny. So you know what, Mark, I just have Kenny logins now. Ha! How long have you been cooking that one up? <laughs> By the way, if you want to log into all Uncle Mike's accounts and hack him, now is the time. His login is Kenny on every account that he has. But I can get behind a little Kenny logins. Who knows? Maybe by the next time we see each other next week, listeners, we could all be in the danger zone. Looks like the markets are staying pretty much where they were. Dow's actually rallied a bit since we started the show again. The rest of the indices have... S&P has rallied a little bit. NASDAQ's pretty much back, still where it was, off about 1.3, almost 1.35% out here. And and VIX, a little bit shy of the 19 handle, about 18.75 or so. So it'll come off a little bit, but again, not a huge evolution from where we were at the start of the show. Unfortunately, that music means it's the end of the show, listeners. But don't worry if you're in a secret club. Hang out, we'll pump some fun stuff in there. I'll be back in about exactly half an hour to break down all the movers and shakers from this week in the world of futures options, as well as the correlation surprises. What shocked us? What surprised us? How did things, how are things actually shaping up? Everybody talks about it, but nobody crunches the numbers. And so we're going to do that for you coming up on Twifo in a little bit. See all how things actually move. Did they move together? Did they not over the course of the past year? And then we'll dial it back to the beginning of the pandemic as well to see how when all things get crazy, uh, how the correlation actually works out. That's when correlation really matters. In 2017, when nothing's happening, not really a big time to look at correlation. But these days, it's an interesting thing. So stay tuned for TWIFO. And if you're listening after the fact, of course, just hit next, and you'll get it in your podcast device of choice. And Uncle Mike, if they want to explore the land of wealth for themselves, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, a couple places. You can check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tusaw. Uh, or we, we have uh, several YouTube videos out there. Just uh, type in St. Charles Wealth Management. Uh, if you're looking for a financial advisor who is not afraid of the option product and who is not fond of Bitcoin, I don't know if there's anyone else in the world that can say those things about themselves. BitcoinSucks.com. It's just waiting for you, Uncle Mike. Just throw him a five bucks. See what he says. Maybe ten. There you go. <laughs> I might buy it for you for 10 bucks and just see what he said. I'm guessing you won't let it go for that, but it's always it's always fun to try. <laughs> Check him out, stcharleswealth.com. 
Twifo.com is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. We're back again in exactly half an hour for Twifo. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for volatility views. After that, for options, oddities. Then, again, we're all off on Monday. Enjoy the holiday. And then back again next Thursday, another episode of the Option Block. We'll see you then. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.